Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so um, well, I appreciate these comments here from the, the video I did yesterday. So today, I'm going to talk about charts. And um, there's a video by this uh, old school Bible or whatever he, Bible Baptist, old school Bible ba Baptist. And he does this video on beware of these charts. Now, this is the chart that he recommends. Okay. And so I'm going to tell you beware of this chart. And I'm just going to go over some charts here. I got like five of them pulled up, six counting this one, or five, one, two, three, four, five, six counting this one. And so we're going to take a look at these charts here. And I'm going to just try to make it real simple to, um, you know, prove these charts wrong. All right, here, let's just do it this way. I can't see nothing. Not, with, not without sticking my nose up on the screen. I want you to be able to see it, too. All right, so one thing I'm going to point out is... The, the main thing here when I look at these is when does Jesus return on these charts? All right, and it looks like the marriage supper, judgment of Christ, and we know by reading the Bible that these are the same thing. It's the same moment in time. All right. And the rapture also. So the rapture is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that. And I can show it to you uh, very simply. Now, of course, there's a lot of places to go to. And this is overwhelming. This is not taking one Bible verse out of context. This is all over from Genesis to Revelation. All right, so in Matthew 24, for example, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear Jesus in the clouds of heaven, and he shall send his angels to gather together the elect. It's the end of the world, it's the return of Jesus, and it's the rapture. All the same thing. All right. And we get this in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and various other places. All right. So let's try to think of this logically. <clears throat> we got the rapture. The rapture and the marriage supper, same thing. The great supper, same thing. All right. Revelation 19, and I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Alright, so this is the marriage supper where we're lifted up out of the earth, up into the air to meet the Lord, and our enemy is gathered at our feet, and they are killed, and the fowls of the earth now are able to eat the flesh of kings and just everybody that's unsaved. Everybody, both small and great. All right, that's the Great Supper. All right, so the mar that's the marriage supper. Now the marriage. Where, where are we at here? Oops, excuse me. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. That's the body of believers. Alright, and we are joined together at this last day at the end of the world when we are lifted up out of this world and in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible this is the marriage when we are 
married, brought to the Lord and made as one. Okay. And he said, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These words, these are the true sayings of God. Alright, so, this happens at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up and our enemy is gathered at our feet and destroyed. Just like what we read in Genesis 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between thee. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The Lord is up in the air, the serpent is on the ground, and Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. All right, this is all throughout the Bible. It's overwhelming. All right, so now... Um, knowing that, now let's go a little bit further into this chart, and they got Christ and his bride, New Jerusalem, on the earth, and then at, they got a thousand years of this. And then fire comes down from God and devours Christ and his bride. Alright, so this is obviously as wicked and evil as any teaching that anybody could ever teach. This obviously comes from the devil. You essentially don't have any judgment here when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are raptured up no judgment so the unsaved what happens to them well this chart doesn't say what it does say is that Christ and his bride will be on the earth for a thousand years and then fire comes down from heaven and devours them Revelation 20 verse 9 Does anybody ever think uh, you know when they put stuff like this together or are they just strictly doing it for the purpose of mocking God and bringing in as many vulnerable people as possible I don't I can't explain it but this is obviously far from the truth obviously it's not supported by scripture this idea that Christ and his bride will be on the earth for a thousand years and then fire will come down and destroy that's not in the Bible so anyways that that's a one easy way to disprove this chart is that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we know it is the end of the world and when Jesus comes we know that the earth will be destroyed by fire just like it was in the days of Noah when the earth was destroyed by water alright it's interesting here in 2nd Peter chapter 3 that it says right here in verse 3, knowing this first, and you got to know this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. So this is what this chart is about. Scoffers scoffing the word of God and walking after their own lust because this is what they, not all of them will tell you, but they all put their hope into this idea that the unsaved women will not be killed at the last day but they'll be given a thousand years and so for a thousand years these people think that they will rule over the unsaved women 
and be able to have sex with them as though they were in their 20 year old bodies for a thousand years that's the whole basis of these charts to scoff the word of God and to walk after their own lust but there's no other reason to have such a chart unless you're putting your hope into a thousand years of sexual activities in your glorified body now of course we that are of God we know that when it's the end of the world there is no more sex we know that and just like what we read in, in 1st John chapter 2 and the world to come the world that we put our hope into is much greater than sex now, I'm not going to go back and show you uh, the videos that I've already shown you where these guys admit that they're putting their hope into this idea of a thousand years coming after the return of Jesus where they're going to be in their glorified bodies and able to have sex as though they were 20 years old. All right, I've already shown that. I'm not going to harp on it because they're all the same. But here we in second in first John chapter two, uh, John writes, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The world passes away when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The world passes away in the lust thereof. You see that? The world passes away in the lust thereof. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Parallel. Directly parallel. Alright. So, let's move on to the next chart. This is obviously a fraud. I mean, come on. I don't know how people are... I, I, I just... I don't know how you're born of the Spirit of God. I don't, I don't know how you have the Spirit of God in you. And you look at this chart... And alarm bells aren't just dinging, dinging, dinging. Because this does not square with the scripture. If you read a chapter a day, man, this is going to, the alarm bells are going to go off. You can't avoid this. This is not right. All right, here's another chart. Dispensational, premillennial view. See, this is why I hate these charts. i got to figure out what in the world does dispensational mean? What does pre-millennial mean? Well, for, first, what's millennial mean? Well, then what's pre-millennial mean? Then you go back to dispensational. I don't know what this means. Let's take a look at the chart. Church age. Righteous, dead, raised. Is that the end of the... Alright, so the righteous, dead, raised. Then you got the rapture. Christ ascends. Alright, so that happens at the end of the world. Alright, so so far we're good. Seven year tribulation, that's not in the Bible anywhere. I can't show you where in the Bible it's not in the Bible. Because it's not in the Bible, I can't show you. It just simply is not there. Reign of Antichrist. 70 week. 70th week, uh, Daniel... Daniel 7. Uh, I guess I better I better take a look. Cause I thought that was Daniel 9. It is early in the morning, so let me wake up here.
All right. Here, let me do it this way. Maybe he's talking about... No, I, I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what in the world. Uh, how do you make a chart and be that ignorant? Uh, I will say this here in verse 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. Now, if you're... It, Daniel's got 12 chapters. It takes an hour to read the book of Daniel. You ought to know, I, I, honestly, you ought to know that Daniel here is given a vision where there are four kings or four beasts until the end of the world. And then the, the beasts are kingdoms and the, the fifth kingdom essentially, the kingdom to come is the everlasting kingdom. And that happens at the end of the world at, after the fourth kingdom beast is killed basically after the fourth kingdom falls which is at the end of the world so he's giving a vision of four kingdoms until the end of the world and he names the first three kingdoms which is Babylon the Medes and Persians and the Greek empires we know that the fourth beast which is the fourth kingdom is the Roman Empire and we know it hasn't come to an end yet so there's no choice. Right now we have to be in that fourth kingdom. It has to be the Roman Empire. And it's obvious, once your eyes are opened, that, the, that this fourth empire is the transformation of the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church. The woman that rides on the beast, which is the Roman Empire, and the beast that was and is not and yet is, is the transformation of the physical empire into the spiritual empire. All right? And it, and it makes complete sense because the Roman Empire has tried to overcome Christianity by disguising itself as Christian. I mean, it's it's obvious. It's an obvious tactic. They're obviously doing that, and uh, and they're obviously fooling people. Lots of people. Okay. All right. So if this is. I don't. Where's this chart at? So they made a mistake. So I'm going to help these guys out. Seventieth uh, week of Daniel. 7 should be Daniel 9. If you don't know this, you shouldn't be making charts. And this is ridiculous. All right, so uh, Daniel, he he's considering or uh, contemplating or whatever uh, 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem, and then comes an angel and says, uh, and then comes an angel and says. And then he says, uh, oh, I can't hear. Like I said, I'm going to wake up a little bit here. 70 weeks. Oh, here, I'm, I was right there. I was right there. He says, consider the vision. All right. And so he, instead of saying 70 years, he says 70 weeks. Now, let's not make a big deal out of this. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make a reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision of prophecy and anoint the most holy. Consider the vision. Alright, so the vision is Jesus laying down his life and then building back up this temple, which is the body, to a glorified temple. Alright, a temple with no sin. 
a temple that will never die. That's what we put our hope in, is this new body, this glorified body. And that's what Jesus has done for us. He has led the way for us. He is God manifest in the flesh. He has come into our flesh. He has died just as we will. He's, so he's leading the way. He died, went to the grave, and then he came back up out of the grave and then ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us. So we're going to follow him on the path that he has provided or made for us. And a part of that uh, process is being changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump when we shall be changed from corruptible to incorruptible. From mortal to immortal, okay? And this is the this is a prophecy here. One of many prophecies all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation that confirms this. Alright, so it is must it is Jesus that laid down his life. The people of the prince are the Jews that came and killed him. Even though it was the Roman soldiers that actually killed him, it was the Jews that pushed them to have him killed. But ultimately it was Jesus who laid down his life. Right. He could have prevented it at any time, but for us he did it. For us he laid down his life. For us he became the sacrifice worthy of eternal life. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for in one week. So that's Jesus did that. Jesus did that and he caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he made it desolate. Even until the consummation, which is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, the marriage of the Lamb. When we are lifted up in the air. That's what the consummation is. It's the marriage of the Lamb. It's the marriage of the Lamb and his bride, which is the people. Those of us that are saved. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. That's the wrath of God being poured upon those that are not saved. This goes all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 15. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. We get this from Genesis to Revelation over and over and over and over. And, and here is another example in Daniel chapter 9. All right, Daniel chapter 9. I'm crying out loud. This is pathetic. Absolute for the no, restoration of the Jews to Palestine, conversion of a remnant of Israel, temple rebuilt. See, Jesus rebuilt the temple. It's amazing to me. It really is amazing that people can't see it. And it's interesting because the Jews, they couldn't see it either. Right? I mean, and it's even written. It's plainly written, stated obvious it happened it's talked about quite a bit and yet people still today claiming to be Christians the reading this stuff and they still can't see it it's a phenomenon it's amazing and Jesus answered and said to them destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up then said the Jews 46 years was this temple and building and wilt thou rear it up in three days but he spake of the temple of his body these guys dispensational premillennial view claims the temple will be rebuilt after the rapture it doesn't make any sense I don't think these guys are putting any thought into anything at all this is and you're gonna believe this stuff All it takes for you is to understand one thing that I'm teaching you. That I'm showing you from the Bible. Just understand one thing that's in the Bible and you ought to be able to see for yourself. There is no seven year tribulation period. It's reign of antichrist. It's, uh, okay, that's another thing I missed here. Reign of antichrist. It, it's actually supposed to be Daniel 9. And so this is claiming that Jesus is the Antichrist. 
And you can't even get the chapter right. And then you're claiming that Jesus hasn't rebuilt the temple. You're essentially saying that Jesus has not risen from the dead. It's insanity. It does it really matter after this? When you get this wrong, none of this matters, does it? All right, so let's go to the next chart. A millennial view. All right. Designed by the present age. We are in the millennial millennium now. The consummation is not yet. Agreed. Christ return. General resurrection of righteous and wicked. Final judgment. Okay. I'm not sure uh, what general. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but it is the resurrection. And then afterward, uh, the eternal state. The life to come here after. All right. So uh, this, I'm okay with this. As long as I, there's not something s sneaky or nefarious about the word general. All right, and the resurrection of the righteous is when we are lifted up in the air. And the resurrection of the wicked is uh, all the unsaved standing before God. All right, if we go to Daniel chapter 12. Verse 2, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Alright, this is the end of, speaking of the end of the world, right? And to me, uh, this minor, this is a minor point, but it says many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake. In other words, not everybody that has died will be resurrected and stand before God. Okay, it's a minor point. To me, it makes sense. All right, but if if you're not getting this other stuff, I wouldn't even worry about it really. If first of all, you gotta you gotta know that when Jesus comes, it's the end of the world. Okay, that's first. It, <clears throat> you can forget about anything else until you figure that part out. All right, so <clears throat> now here, let me just say this: a, a millennial. I don't know what that means. I mean, you could tell me and then have 20 different people give me 20 different explanations of exactly what it means. And I don't care about none of it. All I care about is what the Bible says. Right? Now, as long as there's nothing nefarious with this word general, I'll, I'll go along with this chart. Alright? I think they made it more complicated than it needs to be. Right? But I'm okay with that. Post millennial view, present age, and then the world will become better. Was well, this a joke? The gospel will increase, advance, gradual Christianization of the world. Well, this is Catholic. Not a literal thousand years. Then Christ returns. And this is... I don't know why, but I want to use the word bat poop a lot. There's actually another phrase very similar to that one that I like to use. But this is bat poop insanity. All right, so let's compare one verse with what that chart says. All right, and except those days should I'm sorry, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Right, so let's take a look at this. The world will become better and better and be greater and greater and it will increase and everybody will become Christians and except those days be short and there should no flesh be saved is that not the opposite of what we're reading here and that for the elect's sakes those days shall be shortened this is bat poop insanity bat turd insanity is that okay for me to say I know there's another word that people get upset if I use it I get it it's the word that's in my head, though. I'll tell you that. This is bat poop insanity. 
This is this all this is for people that don't read the Bible. Alright? This is for people that don't care about what the Bible says at all. And so this is gonna uh, appeal to Catholics because they don't give a poop about the Bible. And so they're gonna see this and oh well, things are getting better, wonderful, wonderful. Meanwhile the opposite is true. Okay. Now this is ridiculous here. Right. Here's another amillennialism. Okay, and this might be an example of why I don't <laughs> I don't like titles. Because you got twenty different people. I, I it could be a hundred different people with a hundred different different explanations of exactly what it means. How about we just stick with what the Bible says? Uh, and say to to H E double hockey sticks with all these charts. We don't need them. They're unnecessary. And I just I don't I don't like I don't like charts. I, I mean I I want to make a chart that has a line. Just one line in here. Maybe beginning of the world and then another line going down here to the end of the world and then beyond that is the life to come hereafter the the new heavens new earth I mean, it's really that simple it's almost so simple it, it's just unnecessary to have a chart okay so let's take a look at these letters here C C I don't know what C means C F I don't know what F means Flood, oh creation, I bet you creation, flood. All right, the cross uh, when Jesus died. A S ascension, session. I don't know what that means. See, this is again. Why are you making this so confusing? And look, I get it. I'm dumber than dog do. I get it. But because I'm dumber than dog do. Maybe you can make your charts relatable for somebody like me that's dumber than dog do. Right? Why not? I mean, you, you shouldn't have to have an advanced degree in calculus to understand the simplicity of the Word of God. And the fact is you don't need a degree in anything. All you need to do is believe the Word of God. EOP. Where are we at here? Ascension. Okay, so EOP, Era of Proclamation, Kingdom of the Sun, Thousand Years. So that's, again, not, not in the Bible. This is stupid. Okay, Great Tribulation. Oh, wait, now hold on a second. Where are we at here? Maybe, like, i got to be, I'm stuck on the other chart. Okay, so this is when Jesus ascended. And this is where we're at now. All right, era of proclamation. I don't know what proclamation means. I really don't. I mean, it could mean a thousand different things. All right, so let's try to give the benefit of the doubt here. Great tribulation, last battle. Wait, no, 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 no. Okay, no, 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 no. No, no. See. All I have to do is wait for the alarm bells to go off in my head, and that's how I know that this is wrong. All right, <laughs> really. Let's go to John chapter 16. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All right, the great tribulation is just this world it's not there's nothing here that suggests that somebody's you know Dan Rather is going to come on TV he's going to come on CBS or whatever television and say all right ladies and gentlemen here's the great tribulation we have just now entered this time period that the Bible talks about. No. The Bible doesn't talk about a specific time period. 
everything that Jesus is describing here is all the troubles of this world that we're going to see. And these troubles are going to just increase. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You see that? And so this is just the beginning and so things are going to gradually get worse and worse and worse until the end. All right, so things are going to be at their worst at the end of the world. The day before the end of the world is going to be the worst day for us. The day of the end of the world, the last day, that's going to be great for us. The day before is going to be the worst day possible for us. In general, generally speaking. All right. And, we, and every indication is we're as close as possible to that last day. Or the day before the last day. The, the last day's Eve. Right, because it, it's remarkable to me how corrupt this world is. And also how wrong so many people are on the simple gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That whosoever believes in him shall never die. The promise of eternal life if we just believe in him. And there's so many people here that are against that. It's incredible. They stand up boldly, confidently, and proclaim that Jesus can't save you. That you have to save yourself. You have to be a good person. And that's simply backwards. And of course that's what we ought to expect if we are near the last day. Right? Because, just as the Bible says, except those days be short and there should no flesh be saved. So we're getting to a point where there's very few people that are saved. And because we're at this point where very few are saved, we got very many preaching against the simplicity of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The good news, which is eternal life for those of us that believe in Him. Once saved always say it's not something that you take therefore it is not something you can lose All right, and then of course you know that once you're saved you are born of the Spirit of God you're born of God when you are born of God you can never die it's not possible alright so is this the one I was just looking at? The ridiculousness? I oh, know this is it. Okay, so Parousia? Parousia? I don't know what this stuff is. What is this? Great Tribulation Last Battle? Alright, so if you just cross that out, maybe, oops, cross that out, maybe P, Parousia, Resurrection, Judgment, okay. All happening at the same time, okay. That, I'm okay with that. Alright, then the WTC, World to Come. Alright, so I'm okay with that. It's just you screwed this part up right there. Great tribulation. You added that for no reason at all. We're going through tribulation. The world, before the flood, started off great, and then things progressively got worse and worse and worse. It was so bad that it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And then so he changed everything, saved eight souls, and then slowed down the progression. It, by he uh, he lowered the life expectancy, which slowed down the progression. But the same thing was going to happen again. But this time, God added a savior, a way for us to get out. All right, and so uh, things just getting worse and worse and worse. And I, I honestly, I don't know how you don't see that if you're born of the Spirit of God. Okay, finally, a millennial. Augustine, Calvin, Luther, three people uh, not familiar with, don't care about, honestly. Post Millennial, Edwards, Hodge, 
Rustini. I don't know who these. I've at least heard of these guys. But anyways, who cares? Doesn't matter. Don't mean nothing. A millennial, post millennial, a millennial, old covenant, Jesus first coming, millennium, kingdom growth, kingdom growth. Uh, see, you throw that in there and you screw the whole thing out. Satan fierce out. Satan fierce but limited. Tribulation. All right. See, again, you screw this up here. Satan loosed. What are you talking about? Satan is loose at the end of the world, not before. See, they got this all goofy. Goofy and stupid. All right. Oh, let's see the post-millennium. Old Testament. Gospel influence grows. Okay. Millennium. Christian civilization. All right. See. This one looks... I. Christian civilization. I don't know what that means. See, and why make it so complicated? You throw in words that can be interpreted 20 different ways. Why, why would you do that? Otherwise, I don't know what post-millennial is. I really don't. I can't even comprehend what it means. Post-millennial. After the thousand years, and how is that different than a millennium? See, it's too daggum confusing. Don't care. Don't care anyway. Uh, so the the simple fact is that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. I don't know how people miss it. I really don't. It's incredible. It's very simple, and it, it's overwhelmingly all throughout the Bible. So let's go real quickly. Revelation chapter 1. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. See, this is... When it says every eye, it's talking about every eye. Even they that pierced him, they that killed him. They that stuck their sword into his side, that person that did that, he's going to awake and he's going to see that man that he pierced in his side. All kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. This is the end of of the world just like what we read in Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt it's the end of the world it's the judgment it's the great day of the Lord it's all the same thing it's what everything this has been building up to and it's echoed all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is overwhelming overwhelmingly obvious oh this this is interesting also I John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation the idea that there's a seven-year tribulation it's not supported by the Bible anywhere at all it's incredible we go through tribulation in this world because this world is dark it's corrupt it cannot sustain itself it will be destroyed this world will come to an end. All that are in the world suffer tribulation. And this world is only getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Okay? It's not rocket science. You don't need a degree. You don't need schooling. You don't need any man to teach you. First John chapter 2, verse 27, But the anointing which ye have received of him abides in you. The anointing which ye have received of him 
abides in you. And you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. You're inseparable. You have the Spirit of God dwelling in you when you are born of God. So all you have to do is believe the Word of God. And your eyes are going to be open. You're going to be able to see. And the fact that we get all these is an indication of me that very few people in the world right now believe the written Word of God. There's no way. There's no way for anybody that reads the Bible to see this chart and say, yeah, fire is going to come down from God and devour all of Christ and His bride. There's no, no way. There's no way. I don't believe it. I don't believe you're saved if you're teaching this stuff. I don't believe it at all. I don't know how you could be saved. How can you have the Spirit of God? How can you be born of God and believe Christ and His bride is going to come down onto the earth for a thousand years? And then at the end of the thousand years, fire from God comes down and devours them all. There's something wrong with your heart if you if if that's what you're teaching. And I don't think you're putting any thought into what you're saying. I don't think those people that say these things have any idea what they're saying. That's that's what I think. They're just repeating what they heard and not understanding what they say. That's what I think. I think this is a clear indication that we are in the last days. There's no other way for me to comprehend how it is a saved person can make a chart like this. Christ and His Bride, New Jerusalem, the city of God, comes down on the earth and then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. Christ and His Bride. And you want to make excuses for them, that's on you. That's how you fall under delusion. I mean, the, the simple fact of the matter, this fire coming down from God out of heaven, this happens at the end of the world, just like what we read all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3 again verse 10 but the day the Lord becomes a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven at an hour which no man expects right and the earth is going to be destroyed by fire. The heavens and the earth which are now by the same work kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment perdition of ungodly men. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven the earth is destroyed by fire. Here in Revelation 20 we read about fire comes down from God out of heaven and devoured them. You can't figure out when this is going to happen? You can't figure that out? Yeah, even though this it's more than obvious. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. The earth is destroyed by fire. The earth is destroyed by fire. It can only be one time. And that's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We know that when he comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up out of the earth. So when they, the unsaved, compass the camp of the saints about 
that's when we're up in the air the beloved city that's when we're up in the air Jerusalem which is above is the mother of us all right I'm, I'm sorry Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all Jerusalem the holy city God is above remember what jo Jesus said in John chapter 14 in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. The beloved city is above. So when fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them, where are we? We are above. Just like it reads in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he sends his angels to gather together the elect. Just like what we read in Matthew 13, the parable of the wheat and tares, where the wheat is gathered up into the barn, and the tares are put in bundles, and they are on the earth to be burned. The harvest. The harvest is the end of the world. This is consistent all throughout the Bible. Genesis 3, verse 15. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the fire coming down from God. That's God stomping his foot on the head of the serpent. It's consistent all throughout the Bible. And it's obvious, right? All you have to do is believe what you read. That's it. And once you believe these words come from God, because they do, they come directly from God. These are not man's words. These are words that come directly from God himself. Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. These are not just words that men wrote down on paper, man. These are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. All right, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. We speak English, and English is temporary, but the words will never pass away. And I, to me, you got to think of it as in terms of uh, the meaning of the word and not the actual pronunciation of the word. All right. So you think of heaven and you think of earth. You think of it uh, when you pronounce it in the English. Right, that's going to go away. The, the pronunciations, the, the languages will all go away. And then when Jesus returns and we are changed into our glorified bodies then we will be given a pure language all, right, all the languages of the earth will be done away with all the languages the English the Chinese all the languages will be done away with all right so the words regardless of what language the words will endure forever all right this is beyond obvious the word of the Lord endures forever and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you so how do we understand the word of God by believing it believe you ought to there's no reason not to believe this comes directly from God knowing full well that even God used his own finger and the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God so God physically wrote the Bible and he spiritually wrote writes the Bible. All right? So it's both physical and spiritual. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved 
by the Holy Ghost. All right, so anyways, that's enough. I've gone on too long. If, if you guys have any questions, please do ask. You don't believe these. Look at this. This is nonsense. You don't need all this stuff. All you need to do is believe the simple word of God. All right. Think about I'm going to leave you with one verse. One verse. I'm going to leave you with this one verse. Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Which is interesting to me. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day and a day utter speech and night and a night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun. Wow. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoice as the strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Wow. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Wow. 